survey was one of the first activities that this uh, we organized when the thematic group started back in the summer. So it was a very interesting exercise. And first of all, I would like to thank everyone for the contributions. Uh, just to make a short point here that uh, this was not a comprehensive study, but actually some uh, basic questions were sent out to the managing authorities. So all the points going to cover below, it can be the case that actually they're applicable to more member states than the ones who are going to measure. So if you can, please the make, next slide. So some basic information about this uh, survey. We had uh, 12 uh, quick questions, which aim to give us a quick uh, snapshot of uh, what was the situation with member states establishment and operation and whether the, member, the managing authorities had confronted any specific uh, issues or had some new approaches that they would like to put forward. We received the responses between July and October 2023, and in total we received 22 responses out of the 28 um, CAP strategic plans. If you can move to the next slide, please. So basically all respondents confirmed that actually the member the monitor committees had been established, and also the rule of procedures had been approved by the time uh, this survey took place. Uh, eight of in eight member states, this had done by the end of 22, and in the other 14 member states, this had been achieved within the first months of 2023. In addition, uh, as expected, Germany, Spain, Italy had also mentioned that they have established regional model committees. Here, we're not mentioning France because there's a particular yeah. case there. So basically, in France, there was a particular case where uh, at national level, the, the state level, does have any influence on how the regional model committees have been established because this is done by, only by the regional authorities who have the exclusive responsibility. So this is also an issue to discuss today, how is the case in France at this point, the relation between the, the state level and the regional uh, monitoring committees. If we can move to the next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions concerned if uh, the managing authorities have uh, implemented any new approaches to support the operation of the monitor committees. 12 of the managing authorities gave us a positive response. And uh, these are the following. First of all, to facilitate the, during the transition from the RDP to the CSP model committees, some member states mentioned that they actually increased the number of the members by including members from the private sector, or the paying agency, or external experts. In other case, in, for example, in uh, Flanders in Italy, they mentioned that they actually reduced the numbers of the model committee in order to keep it still efficient. Um, the managing authorities also mentioned that they are using new ways to engage with stakeholders and members and uh, the members of the model committee. As also James mentioned, these include the field visits, uh, to visit projects on the ground to see actually the, what is the CSP going to be delivering. And these are actually opportunities for the members of the model committees to come together, network, and have informal exchanges. In Luxembourg and uh, Croatia, they're going to have uh, thematic working groups. And entirely new formats were mentioned by the Netherlands, where they're going to have the work plans and uh, format, which is actually meetings organized by the national networks. And the objective will be to collect feedback from the members before uh, the actual meetings of the committee. Also in Latvia, they're going to invest in hybrid meetings. And the reason for this will be able to facilitate uh, members of the committee in remote areas to be able to follow the proceedings without the hassle of traveling for physical meetings. Next slide, please. In terms of organizational changes, uh, Estonia and Slovenia mentioned that actually they're going to merge or join the operations of the RDP and CSP monitor committees. Uh, the understanding here is that actually those meetings of these two committees are going to take place simultaneously, and this will allow to increase the efficiency and also reduce the demands for logistical support and bureaucracy. Of course, in Spain, they're going to be investing a lot to improve the coordination of the national regional monitor committees. And uh, another very interesting point is from Sweden, where actually after each meeting, the members are going to be invited to evaluate the work carried out, which is a very practical and tangible way to improve the work of the monitor committee. In Greece, Italy, and Romania, Efforts could be given to provide training and uh, expert support to the members of the committee. Uh, this will be related 
to the content of the CSP, but also on the procedures of the committee itself to facilitate how the members can contribute. If we can move to the next slide, please. Now, here we asked also about the challenges which the magic of threats confronted while they're setting up and running the monitor committees. First of all, it was a challenge to include all uh, relevant stakeholders and ensure a balanced composition, including the gender, the gender balance. A very uh, interesting point was that also there is some member states experience lack of engagement and commitment by the members of the monitor committee. For example, in Greece, it was mentioned that uh, Many of the appointed members, representatives, tend to change position and they have to be replaced. And the new people uh, need to be brought back to speed to be informed. It's a long, lengthy process which disturbs the whole process. Also in the Netherlands, it was mentioned that actually many of the stakeholders do not actually want to be, become a formal members of the committee because they just want to provide ad hoc uh, inputs whenever needed, but without any follow-up commitment, which is also obviously an issue. Another very interesting point is that uh, some ever, some magic authorities mentioned that there's a lack of clarity about the scope of the actual monitor committee. As they put it, it is how to put into practice the opinion of the monitor committees. <coughs> Here, I understand that actually it might be an issue that the regulation doesn't require a formal obligation for the monitor committee to provide specific uh, decision making in specific aspects. So this creates an issue for the monitor, for the actual MIMAs of how to take this into account. Uh, of course, for the regionalized uh, member states, Germany, Spain, Italy, the coordination between national and regional MCs is actually an issue. Uh, as mentioned, uh, the CAP topics and the requirements are quite complex, quite technical. And this is a challenge for the members of the committee to be able to respond and provide meaningful input. And this is also connected to the next point, which is about providing capacity building for the members of the monitor committee in order to make sure that the members can actually make meaningful inputs. Another challenge is that actually in Slovenia, the measure that have uh, the national process of approving the members it is quite complicated because they have to be approved by the government. And whenever some person is replaced, then again, this uh, procedure have to be done all over again, which is also another challenge. If we can move to the next slide. There's of practical challenges. Several of the managing authorities mentioned that running a monitoring committee with a large number of members, it's actually a problem because it is difficult to engage all of them in an equal proportion. Timing is also a key issue because as the Dutch managing authority mentioned, if we need to engage the members into specific procedures like the CSP modifications, they don't need to receive the information very early in advance to be informed and to be able to form a position which they may will have the time to take it into account. In Greece, the measure that organizing the meetings requires resources and time for the managing authority because they need to distribute material early, prepare them, send out the invitation, organize the meeting, which is also a bit of a challenge for the and a burden for the managing authority. Another interesting point was from Romania that we measured that uh, actually animating the meeting themselves and having focused discussions during the monitor committee meeting is, can be problematic. The thing is, this is also a general comment, not only applicable in Romania. Some members tend to take over the discussion, try to hijack them and try to divert the discussions to specific topics of their interest or may see it as a political platform, which does really help the works of the modern committee. If we can move to the next slide. So another question concerned of how did the managing authorities ensure that they're going to have a balanced representative stakeholders in the modern committees? First of all, uh, a key approach was to include a balance of actors from different uh, sectors, from the public sector, private, agricultural environment, and as well as social partners. Quite often, uh, they mentioned that actually the new CSP monitor committee is an expanded RTP monitor committee, which is with broad by bringing in members who are uh, relevant for the first pillar. Some member states took a quite proactive approach in order to find the new stakeholders and invite them to join. So they had personal contacts 
or they try to find them directly liage with them in order to make them join or uh, propose other stakeholders could be relevant for the model committee. In some member states, information about the establishment of the model committee was publicly available on websites where the, everyone could find information who can join and how this could be done. In uh, Czechia, uh, Lithuania, Romania, the applicants were actually approved by uh, committees which involved public, other stakeholders, or other interested parties and institutions who made this judgment of who would be most suitable to participate. Uh, an interesting point was in, uh, mentioned by Denmark and France, who took the initiative to eliminate, let's say, exclude some uh, stakeholders which they considered they actually were in inactive or were not so relevant. And they did so by judging from their previous uh, contribution during the RDP model committee or while there was the consultation about the new CSP taking place, they judged, they were able to judge who could actually contribute in a meaningful way. Moving forward, please. Uh, next, another question for the MAs was what were the actions they took to encourage the effective participation from the members to the processes? First of all, managing authorities promoted uh, the interaction to the members through field trips, working groups, and workshops. And as James mentioned in Germany, they allowed non monitoring committee members to form uh, their own groups and appoint a person who would be able to feedback back to the main body of the monitor committee. Organization wise, they try to send the material out to the members quite early so they get informed and be able to react. In some member states, they organize preparatory meetings. And also, in some cases, there is budget to cover the travel costs. And also, in the Netherlands specifically, it was mentioned that uh, there is money for the members of the motor committee to organize their own capacity building activities or uh, commission independent research. Finally, in Spain, they make sure that they are continually involving the stakeholders. They did so during the whole setup of the motor committee, and it's, this is a standard process. In terms of the formats of the meetings and communication, uh, quite commonly, hybrid meetings and online meetings are now actually very popular. In some other member states, mentioned that they're going to be using online tools like online voting in Cyprus, or using online platforms where they can share information, material, and continue to do the exchanges with the, between the managing authority and the members themselves. Next slide, please. Through the questions and the response of the managing authorities, we, be, we were able to extract some kind of pointers or hinters on uh, how the function of the monitor committees can improve. For example, in Cyprus and Greece, they propose that it is important to continue exchange practice and experiences with other member states. For Hungary, it is important to have a strong communication between the managing authority and the members of the committee. In Ireland, they found a good way to ensure that they're going to have a gender balanced committee by inviting each organization to appoint both a male and a female representative. Yeah. In uh, Luxembourg, as mentioned, because of uh, there is a quite a diverse group of stakeholders participating in the discussions, and this can affect how depth they can uh, discuss technical issues, they consider that there's a need to have small uh, working groups composed by experts who can do the actual technical work and feed this back information back to the monitor committee. In Romania, it is a key issue to ensure that all members have an equal uh, opportunity to contribute to the discussion. So this, they do a wide consultation through a regulated process. Uh, for Sweden, uh, it's a common approach that the managing authority responds and interacts with the members of the committee, we also in between meetings, and make sure that uh, they have uh, easy access to information and data. Finally, for Slovenia, it is important uh, also that them, the members of the monitor committee themselves understand that the monitor committee needs to be an open space for everyone to contribute, and they have to go beyond the very narrow interest to make a meaningful impact. Next slide, please. So the final slides concern some more open questions that uh, the managing authorities put forward and think we can discuss further today. First of all, how can uh, the national networks have a stronger contribution to the operation of the monitoring committees? 
Secondly, it is important to find a way to ensure that the members of the committees can actually have meaningful and quality inputs. From Italy, we have this issue on, during the discussion of the model committees, how to find the balance between the political and technical issues. And finally, how to ensure that the monitor committees can make a balanced decision when there's so many different interests involved. So these were, this was my feedback and thanks again for uh, all your contributions and I'm open to any questions or clarifications. Thank you.